Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I'm going to be doing my best books of 2021. So I went through all the books that I read uh, this past year and really only five stood out to me that I could say I absolutely adored and would read again at any point in time. So the first book, I think, that has to be my number one book is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I really loved this book. I think when I picked it up I was in a really heavy slump and I hadn't really picked up any romance before that and so I decided to give it a chance because I had seen so many people raving about it and I picked it up and I loved it. It was so good and so emotionally fulfilling if that makes sense. Just reading through January and Augustus's story it was just so fun for me and I could relate to both of them on different levels that just made me love the story even more and then I love the fact that like Gus was such a dark person and then January was this like bright happy person but combined they like made each other better like they kind of brought different elements to the relationship that kind of worked with each other so I love that and then I think I enjoyed the fact that following January's journey made me so emotional with her to the point where at the end of the book when she was like crying, I was crying. And then January's friendship with her best friend was also really cool to see because it was such an authentic connection despite the fact that they were so far apart a lot of the time. And it just reminded me of my best friends and just how like we're never really together all that often but I feel like our connection is so strong because we can continue to have such a good friendship despite not seeing each other as often and the distance between us and everything so that was just like a really touching read for me to enjoy and I'm glad it was like the book to get me out of a slump. The second book I have on this list is Love Hypothesis by Haz Allie Hazelwood. This one I adored so much because I feel like Olive was me. I feel like she was just like me personified except for the fact that I definitely would never ever ever be like a biology major or grad student or PhD candidate. But all the other aspects like her personality, her anxiety, her life experiences except for like the orphan thing, I'm definitely not an orphan, but just I guess the feelings from her life experiences that she's gained. I just related a lot to and I feel like it's rare for me to find a character that I relate like 2020 with and I feel like it was Olive. So I love that for me <laughs> and I just found this book so fun, so adorable. I thought her and Adam were so cute together and I, I don't know, it just, as soon as I started reading this book it just became a fave and I cannot tell you why, especially because I did not go into this thinking I would love it so much. I just thought it would be a fun read to have and I would, I guess, like it, but it's more than that. <laughs> I definitely would reread this in 2022 and the year after and the year after. The next one I have is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Oh my gosh, I adored this book so much. As you can see, these are all like kind of the grumpy sunshine trope where one half of the pairing is very grumpy, very antisocial, and the other one is very happy, very joyous, very positive. And so It Happened One Summer is also like that. It follows Brendan and Piper who meet in this like fishing town when Piper is punished for throwing a party that like brings on bad publicity for her stepdad and so he basically ships her out to this town to restart her birth father's like bar and I really enjoyed it overall because of the genuine relationship and connection that Piper and Brendan form from the beginning of the book to the end. It was just 
so authentic and I loved it so much especially because like you can clearly see when Brandon falls for Piper like you can see it and it's um it's like the best thing to read because it's just so genuine <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it but like at one point like you see him like immediately fall into that like moment of this is it like she's the one there's no one else for me this is my girl like this is who's gonna be the end all be all for me and I just I loved reading that so so much and so it just brought me so much joy to read this book and I think that's why it became a fave as you can see this was my year of romance the next two are fantasy which was also a surprise because I guess this year was also my year of fantasy but the next book I have is Beast of Prey by Ayana Gray I loved 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 this book it was so so good I received an arc from Penguin Teen so that's how I was able to read it first and then I think I went out and bought the physical copy so this is about uh, two kids who grew up in who grew up in this village where magic was outlawed and there's this be beast that is terrorizing their village from the like forbidden forest they're not really allowed to go into uh and both of them end up having reasons to go into this forest and capture this beast and so they kind of decide to work together to one make it through the forest alive but also figure out a way to get this beast back to their village so they can um fix the issues that they're having in their lives and this book was just really really well done i loved the writing i loved the different beasts though they were very very creepy <laughs> one of them had me like ugh, crawling out of my skin because it was so weird i enjoyed the characters i loved the authentic um connection and friendship they made but also i loved seeing the raw emotion that they were having in regards to just grief and trying to help save their family in different ways and i feel like this book added, had an extra element in regards to an extra character pov that you got throughout the book that i thought added so much to the story and i really enjoyed this element and i'm excited for the second book to see how the rest of the story plays out because i think it could become really favorite series of mine and then the last book i have on this list is all of us villains by amanda foodie and christine lynn herman but me and monet read this around the same time and we both absolutely loved this story it was so dark and twisted but yet so enrapturing and it kept my attention the whole time it's about this town that has a curse placed on it where every 20 years um, the seven like founding families have to put forward a champion to take place in this competition in order to take control of the last remaining um, bits of high magic that exist in the world and specifically in their town and so once a champion wins the family does gain the right to own this magic for the next 20 years and do whatever they want with it and then the rest have to deal with their like normal basic magic so when the story starts the 20 year mark has hit and so a new competition is about to take place and you do get the perspective of five of the champions that end up being placed forward to take part in the competition and i really enjoyed the story because each of the champions were very distinct i never started a chapter being confused about who i was reading from um partially because their names were at the beginning of the chapter but as i got further into the chapter i never forgot whose voice i was reading um because they were so distinct and different and the fact that the two authors were able to do this with five characters in one book is pretty cool to me i think they did a good good job of like showing the humanity in these characters because they had moments of doubt and moments of failure and moments of fear but they did a good job of reminding you though that these characters though are flawed they are still villains <laughs> 
And so there would be a moment where you would feel bad for them. And then you'd turn the page and then you'd immediately be like, oh yeah, that's a villain. Because <laughs> they would do something that would make you just be like, I can't feel pity for you now. Like, I really can't. It's gone. So I really love that about this story as well. I'm highly, highly excited to get my hands on the second book and find out what happens next for these characters and to see who wins the competition overall, if anybody wins, because I know it's just gonna go out with a bang and I know this book just released, but I'm just, I'm, I need the second book because I need to know what happens next. So those are my favorite books of 2021. I tried to make a list of 10, but when I went through, I could only pull five, so this is it these are the books that really just made my year the year for me so yay let me know if you liked the video if you did please give it a good old thumbs up down below if you have any comments questions concerns please leave those down below in the comment section let me know some of your favorite books of 2021 maybe i'll add those to my tbr or move them up in my tbr if i already have them on there because i do want to make sure i get some good books in 2022 rip and if you are not good at commenting i'm gonna go ahead and say leave me an emoji and if you want to see more videos from me please hit that subscribe button you are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds